We've received some news that Tesla has acquired a battery manufacturing company called Hybar. Although we don't know the price that Tesla paid, let's have a look at the impact that this could have on Tesla's business. But before we get into it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate your support in helping us grow our channel. So Hybar Systems Limited is a small Richmond Hill company in Toronto, which is part of the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, but they do have facilities in China and Germany. Apparently Tesla registered this acquisition on October 2nd as a subsidiary, but they could have purchased it months before without anybody realizing. Now, Hybar manufactures a ton of different components for battery production. They produce precision dispensing pumps and filling systems. They do complex high-speed integrated battery assembly lines and high-performance custom engineered packaging systems. They try to automate assembly systems as much as possible. And part of their latest technology offerings is an advanced automated vacuum filling system for lithium ion battery applications. So that's perfect for hybrid vehicles, but also uh, for laptops and notebooks. And they're probably going to be applying it to fully electric vehicles now that Tesla has purchased the company. Hybar also has decades of technical expertise. They say that innovation is a core competency built on solid mechanical and electrical design capability. So Hybar definitely has a unique ability to move quickly from concept to prototype to final production. Uh, and they have a proven reputation of providing their customers with high performance systems uh, at very good prices. So I think that's exactly what Tesla wants. Uh, someone who will move quickly in the field of batteries by combining Tesla and Hybar, they can expand at a faster pace uh, using Tesla's resources, uh, Tesla's own expertise, and also Tesla's drive to push the battery industry further. Plus, Hybar will essentially have a giant customer, which is Tesla itself, putting their products into Tesla vehicles later in the supply chain. Hybar has a patented pre-fill system that enables the system to efficiently fill cells with accurate amounts of electrolyte. The system also minimizes the required amount of dry room space and its robust design also means low maintenance and high production efficiency. So I think these are all qualities that Tesla is looking for when they build their manufacturing facility, their gigafactories. They do look for uh, the smallest amount of room space and that way they can put things in a more compact area. They can fit more production capabilities in a smaller space and that saves them a lot of money. So these are high bars lithium ion batteries. They say that they have vacuum filling systems for producing up to 120 cells per minute on a single line. And the interesting thing is, is that they can easily change to do different cell sizes. So I think that's right up Tesla's alley. Instead of buying batteries or buying manufacturing lines, Tesla is going uh, right to the company, making those high efficiency manufacturing lines and pushing them to make more batteries faster in a smaller space with less waste. Hybar automates the entire process of filling batteries up with the jelly electrolyte used in lithium ion batteries. They do automatic cell loading into carrier boats. They automatically transfer these to the vacuum fill module, and then they verify the weights before and after they put the electrolyte into the cell. They also have an automatic programmable vacuum filling sequence. Finally, they do the automatic unloading of the cell, but they can also reject the non-conforming ones. So from the high bar website, they also have other modules for cylindrical lithium ion cells. These are cells that Tesla uses, and you saw in the previous photo that they are using cylindrical cells. They have a jelly roll insertion module, a beading module, tab sensing and welding module, a benchtop filling equipment for laboratory development, sealant application module, tab welding and seal placing module, and a die crimping module. So it sounds like they have some patents and ideas to speed up the battery production and make it more efficient, uh, which Tesla can use and perhaps apply it to its existing manufacturing lines, but those are owned by Panasonic. So they would likely use high bar to make their own assembly lines using high bar technology. And Hybar has all of these patents for technology and also expertise in building automated systems. So I think also all of these modules will come together to produce the lithium ion cells from all the different perspectives uh, that are required uh, to produce a cell from just the raw materials to, to the final product. Now, this is interesting for Tesla because the Tesla Semi, as one example, was unveiled in 2017, yet Tesla hasn't started producing them yet. They were supposed to start in 2019, but this keeps getting further delayed. So 2021 might be the time when uh, the Tesla Semi production will start. One of the biggest bottlenecks or things holding back production of these new vehicles is the lack of battery production. So we're not sure yet what the capacity of the Semi battery will be, but we know this large truck carrying 80,000 uh, pounds can do 300 or 500 miles on a single charge. We also know for the Roadster, it's going to have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that's 
for the Roadster, that's double the size of the largest Model S battery, the, the 100 uh, kilowatt hour battery. So it's using tons of cells in both the Roadster and in this truck, which is going to be higher volume likely than the Roadster. So Tesla simply can't produce enough batteries. They can't even produce enough for the Model 3. They have been battery constrained uh, for the longest time. Panasonic's lines were supposed to be producing 35 gigawatt hours theoretically per year, but they were only doing 24 gigawatt hours in April. I think the last quarter they brought that up to around 28 gigawatt hours to gain more efficiency. Now they are opening their factory in China. However, the China factory will have its own battery line. It'll be completely separate from obviously the ones in the United States. And I think in the interest of time though, uh, they're gonna be outsourcing the China uh, batteries to LG Chem, at least in the short term. The plan is to get the battery assembly line in Shanghai. And again, that is gonna be separate from North America, which is where Panasonic is working in house with Tesla to produce battery cells. But just think how many cells will be needed for the Model Y. Tesla will need to more than double their current battery capacity. So also they were saying that the energy division was living off of scraps because they can be less picky on which cells go into the power wall, the power pack or the mega pack, etc. But cars or vehicles need to have all of the same cells of a specific type uh, in the battery pack. So even though people are willing to pay more for vehicles like the Semi and the Roadster, Tesla literally doesn't have the batteries to make those vehicles. Uh, in addition to its plans for the Model 3 and the Model Y. According to Elon, more battery capacity is going to be coming online just in time for the Model Y, but Tesla will still be battery constrained, and that might push back uh, the, the production of the Roadster and the Semi and even the pickup truck to later dates. Now, Elon has said a couple times that Tesla may get into the mining business, uh, which would be a good move in order to vertically integrate themselves all the way from the raw materials to the final production of the vehicles uh, that uses the batteries that they can make. They would also have full control over the supply chain and be able to have a better handle on fixing bottlenecks and doing things to speed up the rate at which batteries and therefore the vehicles uh, that they can produce. It's kind of funny, actually, because mining isn't really the greenest of operations but it's going to be necessary to make batteries, at least until there's enough recyclable material out in the fields, which there probably will never be. But we have also heard recently that Tesla has been in talks with a Brazilian company to supply lithium to the company. So I guess that might be what they mean when they're getting into the mining business. But again, they can only launch new vehicles like semi, roadster, and pickup when the batteries are there. There's no point in revealing the pickup truck, for example, if you're just gonna give away all your secrets to your design and not be able to produce it for years because you're short on batteries. Now this company, Highbar, went under the radar, likely because it's a small private Canadian company, but Tesla also purchased Maxwell Technologies, which is a which was a public company, and they were focusing on dry cell battery technology. It seems that high bars technology of basically jelly roll insertion doesn't really fit well into Maxwell's dry cell technology because they have a different process for making batteries. Perhaps either Tesla is working on both simultaneously and lithium ion isn't really going anywhere, particularly because they can squeeze more efficiency out of lithium ion batteries over time. Or in the other case, Highbar's expertise in automating battery manufacturing systems could complement different parts of the assembly line for Maxwell and help them automate their, their own process. It would be pretty cool, and I'm sure Tesla would like it as well, if Highbar could develop a completely new way to automate and mass produce batteries using Maxwell's dry cell technology. That would be something new for the industry. And Elon also has talked about a battery investor day coming up uh, where they're going to be talking about uh, more about Maxwell and why this acquisition of Maxwell was quite strategic, but maybe combining both of these companies would be even more strategic, High Bar plus Maxwell. So High Bar sounds super exciting. We don't know too much about the company yet, but High Bar Limited Systems was named one of Canada's best managed companies uh, in 2014 and 2015 for excellence in business performance. Uh, when Tesla bought the company, they did seem to shut down their website, and we are looking at a website that has uh, that has been archived and has old images and things from a couple of years ago. So we're not sure how, uh, where they've come in the last couple of years. These are some of High Bar's designs. They do a lot of in-house and they say that they're vertically integrated uh, from engineering and manufacturing to machine assembly, machine controls, uh, system testing and qualifications. It looks like uh, they have a lot of in-house testing equipment and making sure that the quality is there for their batteries and of course for their customers. Uh, on the right, they have here a continuous motion filling system. They seem to design all of these systems themselves in-house. 
And they also have a whole slew of different types of liquid fillers and other manufacturing components for injecting electrolytes into uh, the battery cells. So overall, I think this acquisition will help Tesla build its own batteries and more of them. Tesla definitely needs all the batteries that they can get. Uh, they spent a lot of time on the Gigafactory and building cars quickly, but the real bottleneck has been batteries. So I think it's time for them to take the same approach that they use for mass producing cars and take mass battery production seriously. That will actually be the key for them to produce more vehicles and more different types of vehicles and launch uh, new designs that they have such as the Tesla pickup. So we don't know exactly the size of the acquisition, but I think uh, this one is actually going to be more exciting than Maxwell. Uh, this seems like a way of accelerating lithium ion technology for starters, maybe applying the techniques to Maxwell as well, but it will help Tesla quickly get more batteries out, which I think speeds up the timeline for semi, for roadster, for pickup, which are three super exciting vehicles uh, that just got their timelines moved up in my opinion. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate your support in helping us grow our channel. And don't forget to smash that like button.